All right, we good. All right. Good evening, everyone. We're going to go into a short word of prayer um, before Apostle Taylor go, for, go forward in the word on tonight. Our hearts and minds are one accord. Father God, we just come to you on this, at, uh, on this evening, Lord, just giving you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise, Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. As you increase in us, Lord, we decrease, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for continuing to guard our hearts, guard our minds, and keep our hearts and minds safe. Focus on you, God. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for traveling grace and mercy. For the people that are here tonight and those that could not make it, Lord, we ask that you continue to cover us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, with your blood of Jesus, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, God, with your blood of Jesus, Father. And Father God, we just ask that you would continue to cover every family member in here, Father. Cover their family members, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We ask right now, Lord, that you continue to use us as your vessels, Father, to draw people closer and near to you, God, Father. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, for continuing to align us up with the will of you, God, Father. But we don't want to do anything outside of the will of you, God, but we want to do everything that is pleasing in your eyes, Father. And we say glory to your name, Father. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, on tonight, Lord, that the word go forth, Lord. And Lord, we just, Lord, just just use, Lord, that you just use us, Lord, to use us as your vessel, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, for continuing to instill the knowledge and wisdom, Lord, that you have for us, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that you will use us, Father, to help someone else, Father, to save their souls, Father, from the enemy, Father. Bring them out of darkness and bring them into the light, Father. But yes, God, we want to do everything that is pleasing to you, Father. Father God, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Father. For Isaiah 54 and 17 says, Let no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us shall be condemned, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the covering, Father. Thank you, Lord, for guiding our ear gates, guarding our eyes, Father, and just guarding us everywhere that we go, Lord. For we are blessed going in and blessed going out, and everywhere that our feet shall go, we are blessed of you, God. Father God, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for Lord, for your salvation, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your righteousness, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for to be quick to hear and slow to speak, Father. But we want to continue to be obedient to your word, Father. For Lord, your word, Father, for your ways are not our ways, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord, on today, Father. For Lord, we choose you, Father, for you are our way maker, you are our provider, and you're God and God all by yourself, Lord. For Father God, we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. For let your kingdom come and your will shall be done, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way on tonight, Father, and every day that you are allowed to see the land of the living, Father. For we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's get right into the word on tonight. We're continuing in our topic, subject matter, being a witness, the power of Pentecost. We'll pick it back up in the book of Acts, the first chapter, and we'll roll forward on tonight. Acts 1 and verse 8 is where we will start. So hopefully everybody got the text, you brought your books, your little books. If you didn't, it's okay. Basically, what I want you to do with those, make sure you start learning the scriptures in those. Part of being a witness is knowing what you're witnessing, knowing the word. The Bible says God will confirm his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. So when you speak, you got to speak the word. You got to know the word to speak the word. Amen? So I want you to start learning those. One book was on the new birth, the other book was on wide tongues. So when it comes time to minister to people concerning the Holy Spirit, their greatest portion is going to generally surround that topic of why do I have to speak in tongues? It's because it's in the Word. And when you can show them what the Word says, then the argument leaves you, leaves denomination and religion, and it becomes an issue between them and God alone. Amen? All right. But you were able to give an answer. In fact, before I go to Acts 1 and 8, since I jumped out there already, go to 1 Peter. Another 
favorite verse we like to quote is applicable in this season for where we are and what we are studying. While you're going there, we'll talk about First Peter three. All right, in First Peter three, let's begin at verse. 14 tonight. It says, But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. So I can stop right there. That's a word, word in itself. But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, sometimes being right, doing right, will bring about suffering. But it's okay. The Bible says what? But if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be what? trouble. But here's what we got to do. Verse 15. But sanctify or set apart the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that as asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So one of the things we want to get into tonight about being a witness is being able to have an answer. When you're witnessing a witness is called in the courtroom. We talked about that word witness as the word martyr, martyrs, or is where we get our word martyr from, or to be a martyr. And that common theme, it always means one who can attest to facts, one who can confirm the truth of something. How many of you know people don't want lies, they need the truth. The Bible said it's the truth that will set a person free. Most people that you're going to meet, that you're going to have to witness to, that God is going to send you to, are in some form of bondage. Whether they be in your house, part of your family, or they are at your workplace, or wherever the meeting takes place, here's what the Bible says, you've got to be ready to give an answer. Well, where is that answer? It's in the Word. Where, who's the force behind the answer you give? It's the Holy Spirit. So as we're talking about this this issue of being a witness, as we're coming out of Pentecost, God has poured out his spirit, I want you to understand the why of it. God says, because I need you to witness. I need you to testify to the facts. We talked about another verse that's key in this lesson is Romans 12, verse 10. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the what? Word of their testimony. It was your testimony, or it is your testimony. It is what you say. It is what you can attest to that's going to be the difference. Maker. It's what God's going to anoint and get on to bring about a difference in that individual's life. So Peter tells us we got to sanctify the Lord. We got to set aside. We got to set apart God in our heart. Why? So we can be ready to witness. Okay? We're talking about being a witness, but watch this. The Bible says you got to study to show yourself approved. As a workman that needed not to be ashamed because you rightly know how to divide the word of truth. Okay? So being a witness ain't just opening your mouth, it's understanding why you open your mouth. It's understanding what the Holy Ghost wants to do, wants to convey, what the end result should be, and your part in it. Amen? It ain't just all him, it's you. You gotta study. You gotta get the Holy Spirit something to work with. Okay? So, go back to Acts 1 and 8. So, we know Jesus told his disciples, tear in Jerusalem till you be endued with power. They had some questions. They were in the upper room. They were all at one accord, waiting on the outpouring of God's Spirit. We already know Joel says in Joel 2 that God said he's going to pour out his Spirit upon your sons and daughters, and they were going to prophesy. They were going to open their mouth. There it is again. They're going to open their mouth. They're going to speak. If you prophesy, you got to say something. Amen? But gone be the days, and I don't mean to say this ugly, but it's just the way it is. Gone be the days of us talking ignorant to folks. Talk intelligent. Talk with truth and specificity. Because the Holy Spirit is intelligent. He ain't just jumping and shouting, and he ain't just all speaking in tongues. He has the ability to articulate accurately. Amen? And the way he does that is when you and I study, 
to show ourselves to prove that you can be confident when you come before anybody and be able to deliver the message of the gospel. Amen? Amen. All right. So Acts 1 and 8, I'll pick it up in verse 6. It says, when they therefore would come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. That word power, there's the word deuteronomy. You shall receive authority. Watch this. Deuteronomy also is where you get the word dynamite. You shall exp receive explosive authority. So when you speak, it ought to be an explosion. Man, when people get through having a conversation with you about the things of God and the things of King, something only got blown up in their life. Glory to God. But after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. And ye shall be, and here's the part we are talking about tonight, and ye shall be, and ye shall be. Anytime God says be, that means it's automatic, it's right then, it's instantaneous, and it ain't going anywhere. Everything God said in Genesis to be, it still is. So what we got to get to understanding now is God is shifting us into the arena of being witnesses. God is shifting us through the power of the Holy Ghost, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the endowment of the Holy Ghost. God says, I need you to tell somebody about me. I need you to state the facts about me. Not only the facts I'm revealing, because the Holy Spirit is a revealer as well, but God says state the facts of what I've done in your life, of how I've changed you, how I brought you from where you were to where you are right now. Glory to God. See, I think I had this explaining, I was talking with someone earlier today. See, what we don't realize, the Bible said our life is a rhythmic pistol. Written in red of all men. People see you before they hear you. Paul told Timothy, he said, watch your life and your doctrine. Save yourself, and then you'll be able to save them that hear you. Watch this. You can't save them till you get saved. Huh? It's got to be real in you in your life. So when you open your mouth to convey, the explosion is there. Hmm? What good is dynamite without a witch? Come on, y'all. I said, I need you to be explosive, have the power in reserve. All I need to do is light the week. So once the conversation starts, we're going to get something to happen. Watch the question. When they ask, what is the hope that's in you? Bang, there it is. That's all I've been waiting on. Just ask me that question. I've just been waiting on that opening. I've just been waiting on that point of contact. Why? Because now the light, the, the, the match is strong. Now the Holy Ghost can go to work. See, a lot of times you miss opportunities because you don't, and we'll get into this issues of inferiority and all this. Listen, Holy Ghost is always ready to work. Yeah. Holy Ghost is already, always. See, why? See, here's the issue. People say, God, use me, use me. But then God said, here I am trying to use you, and you won't open your mind. I'm trying to use you, but you won't live right before me. I'm trying to use you, but you in the conversation, you got more issues than they got. I'm getting on script a little bit. They sit down telling you they problem, and you said, hold up, let me tell you about mine. Well, wait a minute. Problem can't solve problem. Huh? Somebody got a problem, somebody need to have a solution. The Holy Spirit, God's word is the solution. Jesus is the answer. So he says, guess what? I'm going to get you some help through the power of the Holy Ghost. This is that season. I want you charged up and ready so whoever I bring across your path, you've got an answer to their problem. Amen. The Bible says, why should we get ready, right? Be ready to give an answer to every man of the reason of the hope that lies in The answer. Well, where does the answer come from? It comes from God. Well, how do you know? Because you're spending time in the presence of God. You're sensitized. You're ready for whatever God wants to do. So after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, 
all the most powerful the best way to, 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 to formalize all that is wherever you go, whenever God chooses to activate you, he can. Whatever gift he needs to activate. The Bible says it is as the Spirit will. Read verse 2 and 12. The Bible says the gifts of God are activated by the Holy Ghost. Why is he so important? He's the activation to the Holy Spirit in the earth. He's the one that turns it on and turns it off. Now some folks turn on their own gift. Be mine. Some people turn on their own stuff and say what they want to say. And sometimes it ain't truth. And you hear me say a lot of times, stop proper lying. What you say in God ain't big gonna say. And you know God. He said, that's your flesh acting up. Then you got to also watch out for people who are who are just manipulative through the things they say. The Bible says a prophecy it should edify, exhort, and it should comfort you. If it don't do those three, dismiss it. First and foremost, get out of everybody lying and stop letting everybody talk to you. Easiest way to handle that. All right, so I'm going to cover some scriptures tonight that God began to give me so we can look at, we looked at 1 Peter already. Go with me now to Romans 1. Romans 1. Some of this is generic to some of us, but it's still good stuff. Sometimes we have to go back and get a refresher course. Because we get lax, we get lazy, we get slowful. Amen. The word came suddenly. We just got to start rebuking some stuff. We got to rebuke laziness. Amen. Saints can't be lazy. We got work to do. The Bible said work while it's day, night coming. If you don't know it's already night, I ain't talking about the physical night of darkness outside. I'm talking about it's dark in the earth. Amen. And what they need as believers, what the sinners need to see is the power of God. Amen. What's going to make sinners believe is the power of God. Amen. Truth be told, what made you come? Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. God, what, number one, God went to us loose. But there were some things we saw done. There were some things we heard that we knew it had to be God. And because of that, you brought your knee to the ground. And you open your mouth and you confess God, your need of God and his great salvation. So looking at Romans 1 and verse 16, look what it says. Here's what Paul says. I'm going to begin in verse 15. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of, and again, remembering Christ is not in Jesus' last name. It's his function. I'm not afraid or ashamed of what happened to me. See, Christ is what happened to me. The anointing is what got on me. But watch this. Now, the anointing is in me. Because of the infilling of the Holy Ghost, Father, because of the endowment and the power of God, in me now is that anointing. That same anointing that was on Jesus. Let me show you that. Hold on, Romans. I'm going to. I'm going to Acts. Ten. So you and, and the reason we're doing this, the reason we're, we're going to flip and check all these out, is because I need you to understand. See, God never asks or requires you something He has done or will do. Okay. The Bible says when John baptized him, the Father spoke out of heaven and said, This is my beloved son and my real faith. What had just happened to Dove lit up on him? The Holy Ghost. But now watch this in 10, Acts 10 and 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Look what it says. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Well, how do you get the anointing without the Holy Ghost? See, a lot of people want to testify to being anointed, but when you start talking about the Holy Ghost, they don't want to talk about it. Well, how are you going to be anointed and have no conversation concerning the Holy Ghost? You can't have the anointing without the Holy Ghost. Read the Bible. The Bible said God anointed Jesus 
of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and with power, who went about, watch this, note now, once he's anointed, he go to work. So you got to ask yourself a question if you're anointed. How much work do you get done? See, because watch this, and I used to tell you this all the time, it's back time again to repeat. The anointing I carry ain't even for me. The anointing I carry doesn't do anything for me, but it does everything for those I come in contact with. Now, those who are over me, their anointing works for me. Come on, y'all. Your anointing is for someone else. Notice what happened. Jesus got anointed. The Bible said that the Holy Ghost and power came on it, and he went about doing good, look at that, and conjunction, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. When you get the Holy Ghost, when you get it new with power, when the anointing of God is on your life, it's to release somebody from a demon or a devil. It's to cast out devils. It is to rebuke devils and say, you've got no place here. The Bible says, and Luke says, I, by the finger of God, cast out devils. Told you that last week, last Monday, when I prayed for the lady, and, and, and my little finger only was the one that heated up. My little finger only. And before I barely touched that lady, she was down and out. It was the fire of God through the finger of God. God said, it, this spirit of alcohol, little, my little finger on hell it. My little finger will deliver from that. My little finger will break that spirit of oppression of her life. Jesus Christ. But that's what happens when you get anointed. When you get anointed, you ain't running from devils. But now you ain't running around trying to find them either. But if you show up, if there has to be a showdown between the Spirit of God and demonic force and power, God said, I ain't running. It's got to go. Bill water, sweet water can't stay in the same ground. Demons and devils ain't going to live in the same house. The Spirit of God ain't going to live in the house with demons and devils. Somebody got to go. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Look at this, 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on the tree. He said, we saw this. We saw God cast out devils. We saw God bless people's life. See, all Acts is, is the beginning of the church, is the things they did once the Holy Ghost did. Amen. That's when you go to Acts 3, and, and, and you see, go to Acts 3 right quick. Acts 1, the Holy, uh, Acts 1 is the intro. Of the, Acts 2, the Holy Spirit falls. Peter preaches his message. Then look what Peter says in 38. Acts 1 and 38 on Acts 2. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. For this promise is unto you, your children, and to all of all, as many as the Lord our God shall call. So God ain't just calling you to salvation. He calling you to the infidel. He calling you to the work of the ministry. Come on, put it together, Ephesians. God said, I got apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and they'll do, what they ever do is to train you how to do the work of the ministry. Right. The work of the ministry is to get in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and be a witness for God and the things God has done so people can get free. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, y'all. For the promise is unto you and to your children. So God don't want just you. Watch this. God wants your children to get it too. Now, I forgot into this uh, 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 Sunday in the message. But see, children do what they see parents do. Children, children move by demonstration. Hmm? 
I was talking to a lady and she brought this out. It was so clear that she was talking about how they were trying to get her grandson to call the, her husband, Papa, or whatever it was. But he kept calling him by the name they were calling him. So to reverse that thing, they had to stop calling him by his given name and get call him Papa or Mama. Because now the child picks up, I'm going to say, come on, y'all. Look at this. Well, what God is saying, say what I say. Don't just say what I say, but also do what I do. Because greater works than these shall you do also. But look at the work that I did. Now model that. I'm giving you the Holy Ghost, the ability, the power, the endowment, the legal right to do it. I've already given you my name and whatsoever you ask the Father in my I will do it. Y'all missed that yet. I will do it. Whatever you ask in his name, he will do. And at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. There's power in the name. But greater than the name is the word. God said he's exalted his word above his name. Psalm 103. His word is above his name. Now if the name is that powerful, and you start studying the word, Huh? Man, your witness level just, I mean, you just went up, man. Your value just skyrocketed. But what I'm also trying to get you to see tonight through this in a duality is this. That's why the enemy don't want you to have it. Because now you become unstoppable. See, he don't want you to know what works against him. How do we know it works against him? Well, Mark tells us, Matthew tells us, it says when Jesus was being tempted, what did he keep saying? It's written. See, the devil respects the word. Now, here's what's sad to me. Demons and devil have more respect for the word than the people who supposed to be carrying it in their belly. Hmm? Demons have a greater respect for what God has said than those who are born again by God it's supposed to be feasting in on this every day. Watch what he also said. Man that live by bread alone, but by what? Hmm? That's why what you give out must be the word. God's going to vindicate his word. God's going to validate his word. Jeremiah said God watches over his word to perform. So the thing God's looking for when you open your mouth is just my word in the way he meant. Whoo, Jesus. So we see. Okay, I'm going to Acts 3. So go to Acts 3 now. So the Holy Ghost is filled. God's moving. God says his promises for everybody. So look what Peter and John do. Here they go. They get started. Now Peter and John went together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. They were going to prayer. They're going to prayer. They're going to prayer. What are they doing? They're going to pray. Huh? The ninth hour. They're going to pray. It's early in the morning. They in prayer. We at 6 o'clock. They at the ninth hour. It's early in the morning. But they going to prayer. Maybe we need to start a 9 o'clock prayer. I don't know. But they praying. They praying. The church started with prayer. And that's one day in the other room together praying. Just because the Holy Ghost fell didn't mean they stopped praying. They kept praying. Now Peter and John went up to the temple to hour of prayer, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid dead at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask unto them that entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked and on, asked and on. Be ready to give an answer to every man on the reason he asked it. The man is laid there asking for help. Notice where they lay in, at the gate of the temple. Well, who, who, who's, who's, um, um, habit should it be to go into the temple? The righteous. Those who were born again. Those who were called of God. So he was in a prime spot to be delivered. Sad thing is, prior to now, he was. Come on, Elder Brown. Prior to now, he was. Because the Holy Ghost had it then. But now these boys are empowered. Now they got the Holy Ghost. 
See, like this, when Jesus was on earth with them, they couldn't all have it. They didn't need it because he was the embodiment of it. But once he left and went and ascended back to heaven, now he could disperse his spirit to everybody. So why did he ain't got to be there, but his spirit is. He's not there, but his power is. So what happened? Peter and them seeing the man going to temple, the man fastened his eyes upon him, but John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. How I many you know there's some folks out there who expect to see, receive something from you when they talk to you? Oh, y'all, y'all ain't got y'all messing with the text now. Huh? The man was expecting that if I tell you my problem, hmm? y'all ain't y'all ain't catching me tonight. Y'all are so bad when y'all are down with the power of the Holy Ghost. Folks talking to you because they want the answer from you. They can talk to everybody. But they sit there talking to you. Because you're supposed to be lit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? You're supposed to have a fire on the inside. The Bible said a man was expecting something. He thought he was going to get money. Huh? And expecting to receive something of them, Peter said, what you think is the answer ain't even the answer. See, you done got into routine. You done got into habit. You begging, but you begging for what you what won't cure you. Come on, come on, come on. Hmm? You complaining and you murmuring about what ain't gonna change nothing. That's when that word came suddenly. That's all you can folks. Man, I don't want to hear that. I ain't trying to be ugly. That ain't gonna save you. That ain't gonna change you. Okay, we done cried about that long enough. Time to stop crying and start praying. Okay, why do you complain about what you keep permitting? Huh? We ain't got to keep having that conversation. We ain't going to stay on the phone no whole hour. I ain't got that kind of time to tie up. Huh? You done told me the story 400 times. Either you don't leave or you don't stay. Hmm? If they ain't changing all this time, they probably ain't gonna change. Now somebody gotta change. Can it be you? Huh? Ain't no need to keep complaining about what them folks doing out there. Go find another job. Go, did you put in any applications anywhere? I mean, ain't got nothing, but it's, it's direct time. I don't need no more. Okay, but we just. I, that ain't the witness to sit there and just. No. It's a call to action. It's a time to do something. Don't complain about it. Be about it. Yes, yes. So they expect you to receive something. Peter John said, look, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, that's what we're going to give you. What we're going we to give you is what we just got in the upper room. We're going to give you the solution that, watch this, you ain't got to stay out here bad no more. You get up off your feet. You get up off your, 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 sit, your derriere and get yourself on up. And walk into, watch this here, watch this here. You so close to the miracle, you don't even realize it. This story ain't no different than the man who was sitting at the pool of Shalom, waiting for somebody to put him in. And I said it had five fortunes. That's the five four men, the apostle, prophet, down to the feet. And you still ain't got in? Again, that's the other review. How do we just not, ain't nobody saying nothing? Ain't no gift in operation? Everybody just wearing a title? But where's your function? You get the title based on your function. You can't buy this online. Online ain't a damn thing. I don't care what they put on that paper, who signed it? You should have kept that hundred dollars, sold it in here, got in here and got to praying, and I guarantee you, you've been more than than what that paper said. Amen. Amen. I mean, we in that season of life, people buying. 
No different than the man in Acts 8, who when Peter and them came and they were praying for folks to get the Holy Ghost, and he was a, a magician and he couldn't do what they did, and then he talking about this, I'll buy that. You can't buy this. You got to die to get this. You got to die to get this. You can't pay for this. See, he was bamboozling people, and he wanted now, oh, this is a good trick right here. Show me how to do it. This ain't no trick. And it ain't no trap either. This is demonstration of the real Holy Ghost power. So look at this. Send me go to hell, I know. It says, I have a thing. Here you go. Here's the word I just told you a minute ago. In the name of Jesus. In what? In the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Now they are using their authority and their right to witness using the name. In the name of Jesus, watch this, of Nazareth, solution time. Rise up and walk. Your problem ain't silly and gold. Your problem is you can't walk. Now, what most would have done, put a dollar in there. They just said, oh, Paul, these boys said, uh-uh. Because remember, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. Luke 10. <laughs> Luke 10. This is all in the book, Luke 10. Luke 10. And after these things, verse 1. And after these things, the Lord appeared unto appointed other seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Now see, this is the trial run of the infant. Alright? Therefore he said unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, this is also where we've got to make a correction now even in our prayer time. Is start praying for the hearts. Come on, help me with the Holy Ghost. Listen, we get ready to leave out of Pentecost, headed to the Feast of Tabernacle or hearts. Lord, where's the hearts? Okay, let me say it a simple way. Lord, where are the souls? Huh? So part of our prayer now is, Lord, where are the laborers? Where's the hearts? Hmm? Where are the laborers? Where are the hearts? Read your back. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among what? Wolves. Now, if you know the difference between a lamb and a wolf, one's mild now, but what you're going up against, it's sitting there with his, his thing, brought back showing all his teeth. It don't mean to how many teeth they show. Right. Scripture says in Psalm, God has knocked out the teeth of the ungodly. Oh, don't worry about them and they guns. You the one with teeth. Yes. You're the one with bite. You a lamb, but you got a bite. Oh, Go your way, behold, I send you forth as lamb among wood. Now look at this here. Why didn't Peter and them have any money? He said, carry neither purse, nor strip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. He said, don't take no money with you on this trip. Because typically, what we would have done was drop stuff in the cup. God said, this is revelation. Come on, y'all, this is revelation. God said, you ain't going, uh-uh. This ain't money ain't going to do this. Yes, money answers all things. But when you need a deliverance, it ain't money. When you need a healing and a miracle, it ain't got nothing to do with your money. It's got to do with what I say. How do we know? Watch this here. Jesus, who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it his mother? Was not sin at all? It's my demonstration of glory and power. And so I always go up to folks talking about sin. Sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with sin. It's just God setting up a demonstration. Yeah. Jesus. Thank you, man. Woo! Glory to God. So carry me the personal script, no shoes. He said, into whatever house ye enter into first, say peace be to this house. Notice, you carry peace. Y'all, 
man. Come on, y'all can make me run down the street tonight. Listen, you carry peace because you got Jesus as peace. But you got the Holy Ghost as power. First thing you do is open your mouth and say, peace. I come in peace. I ain't your enemy. Huh? I come to give you what you can't get elsewhere. I come to help you. Like this. He says, and if the son of peace be there, your peace will rest upon it. If not, it will turn to you again. Ooh, Jesus. Now, I got to drop on down. Let's get out of there. So you see that God's going into every house. Now, if I had the time to SCG, just break it all the way down. God's going from house to house, city to city. Hmm? Ain't no place God said, I can't go. Because if you got feet, I can get there. Y'all miss that. Huh? If you there, I can be there. Because everybody ain't coming here. Hmm? Watch this. Watch this. If you going to catch the fish, you got to catch him in his environment. Huh? You got to catch him in his environment. You got to go to the lake to get it. Because he's comfortable in his environment, which is water. You ain't going to find the fish flying in there. Now, if it's a bird you want, you got to look up. If it's a fish, you got to go to the pond. Everything operates and is comfortable in its environment. You can't be a, if you're going to be a witness, I hope y'all catch at least one. If you're going to be a witness, you can't be afraid of other environments. Well, I ain't going over there. What are you over there for? You got saved. Some of you still over there. You just don't want to tell it. You ain't at the club. You, you, you. You, you socialize. Y'all don't want to tell it. Say something else. Say You're going to short circuit power if you don't stop lying. See, until you deal with your issue and struggle, you can't help them deal with theirs. Anyway, let me leave that on. Don't make them mad, but you're going to be mad, you're going to be glad. All right. True sister. All right, so look at this. So now, we see what Jesus told him to go do. Okay, let me finish. I got to go. Ahead. And then the same house also remained eating and drinking such things that they give you for the labor is worthy of his hire. So go not from house to house. And that's to get your work done first. Then move. Watch this here. And in whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And notice what? Nine. And heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, see, we're still missing something. After the Holy Ghost fell, we went from just establishing the church, but we bring it in the kingdom. We bring it in the king's domain. Kingdom is king's domain. Where the word of a king is, there's power. We're saying what is more powerful than anything manifested. Come on, y'all. Now watch this here. But into whatever city ye enter in, and they receive you not, go your way into the streets, and the same, and say, every city, dust of your city, which cleave upon us, be wiped off against you, notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God came to you. Now, I can't make you get it, but I can let you know it's here. It's available. It's yours for the asking. Okay? Now, but look what he said. And this also goes back to a, a point Minister Alpha made Sunday. We're going to pick that up and take it further. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for your city. We know what happened in Sodom. But out of the verse she read Sunday, out of Deuteronomy 32, the Bible talks about Gomorrah is the root. See, we got to dig up the root. The root is this disobedience. This root cause is where the Bible says in Romans that you hold the truth in unrighteousness. So watch this. You know what to do. You just choose not to. And that's what's opened the gateway for the enemy to come in right now and rake the havoc he's raking. Watch this. Hear the word. Hear the word. Hear the scripture. They that know to do good and do it not. 
that shit. See, what some people don't realize, the worst thing you can do is come into the knowledge of truth and refuse to do it. That's why the scripture said, if you be willing and. See, a lot of people willing, they ain't obedient. They really, but they just won't obey God. They want to do it the way they want it done. And God said, it ain't your way, because I'm the way. It ain't your truth. This is a big thing right now, but I got to speak my truth. And that's a nice way to tell you all. Well, I just need you to understand how I feel. Well, that's part of the problem. You too much in your feelings. And because you're in your feelings, you ain't sensitive to God. Because your emotions are overriding your state of being. Remember, be. Be with us. So you can't be because you're emotionally distraught. You're all over the place. Hmm? If somebody wants to look at your chart, you multicolored. You're all over the place. You black, blue, green, red, you everywhere. Your mood done changed so much, medicine ain't gonna help. Watch this here. So now, this is what he does. He sends them out. And look what he does in 17. So the same 70 he sent out in verse 1 returned. And the 70 returned again with joy. So let's point that out. Being a witness is a joy. Come on, y'all. If you will just do it, you'll have fun. Because you're going to see some stuff you ain't seen before. You're going to experience some things you never experienced before. Let's look at them. And the seven returned again, saying, with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. In essence, it worked. Jesus. What you told us to do, the way you told us to do it, it worked. Now, I can stop right there and end the end of message and stick right there. See, if we would just do it, we'll see it work. Yes. Yes. The seven in return and said it worked. They were witnesses that it worked. Watch this. You can't be a witness till you see. But you can't see without an order to go and an instruction as to how to do it. Huh? So the seven returned. Jesus told them, go in there the house, speak peace to the house, and if anybody in there sick, you pray for them. Don't worry about the result. You just do this. Go and be obedient. I'll handle the results. The Bible said, one so is one water, but God, increase ain't on you. Obedience to go and say is on you. In, uh, uh, oh, the, the, the will to declare the facts you know is on you. And he said unto them, verse 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I saw it. Now, where did you pick that verse up? That's Revelation 12, uh, verse 11, 10 down to 12. Jesus said he saw him fall from heaven like lightning. And that's, I saw him when he got kicked out. Why do you think I can tell you how to move against him? Because I saw him when he failed. I'm telling you his weakness. I'm telling you he ain't as high as I am. But he's underneath me. Y'all still ain't calling. He is so underneath me that I turned around and put him under you. He's under your feet. Go all the way back to Genesis. I put him under your feet. I told you to bruise his head. Every time you step, who that Kirk Franklin made that rather stomp the devil? It was it Kirk? Was he in front of him? Somebody made it. Stomp the devil, stomp. No, that wasn't Kirk. That was, uh, me and him went to school together, as a matter of fact. Uh, the church is over in Italy, east side. But anyway, stomp that devil. Why? Because he's under your feet. You can't stomp what ain't beneath you. 
Because if you don't get this, then it's like, oh my God. See, watch this. How are you having a conversation with what's beneath you? Hmm? You didn't catch that, did you? Jesus just told you, get that dust off me. That rascal, he does. He is beneath you, but he's talking to you. All right, listen to this. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means See, here we go again. I'm giving you authority. Yes. I'm giving you power. Well, Jesus turned right around and asked one day he did the same thing. He gave it now, not to seven it, to as many as the fall, as many as the Lord our God shall come. Right. He designated seven, but then he turned around and asked said, Everybody can be his power. Yes. Everybody can be a witness. Yes. Everybody that will open themselves up to the power of God that can and, and, and be sensitive and obedient to him can operate in this. Jesus. All right, let me give you one more verse now. We're going to keep going. What time? Oh, Lord. Go to 2nd and I'm going to close right here. We ain't nowhere near exhausted. Ooh, Jesus, 2 Corinthians 4. Good place to shut it down. 2 Corinthians 4. So look at what it says. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Everybody got a ministry. Everybody has the word ministry means the ability to serve. Ministry don't mean go get a church. Ministry don't mean get a building. Ministry don't mean start this, start that. Because a lot of stuff folks start and they, come on y'all. Huh? You have a ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. If you faint, you ain't even got a ministry. The Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. The Bible says, "Draw the Lord is your strength." So, what you got to do if you faint and falling out because stuff happening to you, you got to come back and check your your grace and mercy, huh? Because once you really get a ministry, you got problems to solve. Y'all notice how I worded that? You got problems to solve because the ministry is served. Every time y'all go in Walmart, they solve your problem. Even problems you ain't got. Because <laughs> you bought more than you were intending to. And they put this little stuff in the aisle, you in the target, they, they solved your problem, you went to the gas station, they solved your problem. Everybody understands the concept. But it only gets lax when you get to the church. Hmm? You needed that toilet tissue, whatever. That gas, whatever. Okay? It was a service. That's a ministry. Right. They, they, a ministry is to have an answer or a solution to some problem. Right, right, right. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Look at this. Not having the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. What are we doing? Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Y'all ain't catch that, did you? God said, I'm going to let every conversation you have and what you're talking about. And I'm looking to see whether or not you're releasing truth or a lie. I'm looking to see whether you're exalting yourself or is the conversation about me. How much of your conversation is about me? Truth. Ooh. Everybody wants to share their truth, but your truth ain't about him. Because if you would really tell the truth, your so-called truth wouldn't even be a truth. You realize it's a lie and that the true truth heals your life. 
Jesus. Because what you spew in our spit, not even have a snake venom anyway. It's poison. You hurt and you want everybody to hurt because you hurt. Snake, witch, warlock, sorcerer, diviner, fortune teller. You know there is a snake that ain't got to bite you, he just releases them. And every time you just talk about your hurt, your pain, your past. Without saying God has healed or delivered, right. you just be spit a snake them. Yeah. And that's how people get seated. Yeah, and then, see, misery is love company. Mm -hmm. And people who are hurt want other folks to hurt like they hurt, so now they can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to have a doggone conversation. Talk about that. Come on. Right. I'm not going Man, you remember when? Yeah, I remember. I know stuff you don't know. I did. Come and talk about that. You ain't even got the whole story. You were there all the time. I don't talk about that. Be mindful of folks that want to pat down the memory of that. Yeah. Yeah. Old school jam. Yeah. Huh? Old school, Jack. Remember how we used to do it? <laughs> Ain't what we used to do. How we gonna do it now? Do you have a now word? Because yeah. we ain't back there in the 80s and 70s. Is it? We ain't back there. We talking about now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a word for now? Yeah. Do you have a word in season? See, watch this. You got to let go know. Man, I can't taste that. That's better. I don't want that. I ain't tasting that. We ain't, that, that, ain't, that, that ain't for us. We ain't talking like that. Take that somewhere else. Look at this. So, you got to learn how to, uh, manifestation of the truth. The manifestation of the truth is healing. The manifestation of the truth is delivered. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. Jesus' coming was a manifestation of deliverance. So what you got to put on the conscience of a man or a woman that you talk to is the ability to be delivered. Watch this, though. I'm going to show it to you. Then we go on. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. It shouldn't take you but three minutes to realize you're in front of a lost man or a woman. Now, I ain't got time to entertain your foolishness. You need to be saved. Or I need to, what Blue 10 said, I need to kick the dust off and move on. Okay? If you ain't ready to receive peace, I got, I got to go. Because I'm going to sit here and waste time and energy with you. Sooner or later, I'm going to be frustrated and mad. And then I'm going to eat. I'm going to say something. I ain't done something. I ain't got no business. So. Because you got to remember this about spirit. You either going to win them or they're going to bring you down. And if you out of your ranking and you realize you out of your ranking, cut the conversation and run. Save your neck. Why I say save your neck? Because that devil get ready to hang you. You done sit there and listen. They done showed you their little book. You done sit here and entertain all this fooling. I, I don't need your book. I told the Jehovah's Witness, put your book up. I'm going to put mine up and let's talk. <laughs> let's go toe-to-toe -to -toe on salvation. Let's go toe-to-toe -to -toe on what I know God did. Yeah, right. See, because I ain't got to have a book over because the book will come up out of me. But you can't do nothing without your reason book. You got a book with a reason why. I got a live word. That I have hid in my heart. Do I know man do about your reason? Okay. Look at this. But if our gospel be here, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom, look at this, the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not the fathers they don't believe. Well, watch this. You can't not believe, and they not believe, and we get to believe. Blind 
can't lead the blind because everybody's going in the ditch. I told you earlier in the day, didn't I? If somebody in the ditch, somebody got to be on the land with the rope. Huh? That means you got to be around people who are stronger than you to pull you up to where you need to be. Hmm? Sometimes it ain't good to have same level fellowship. That's why God gives you a half apostles, prophets, man, and That's the purpose of the coach and the mentor. It's to bring you up. Somebody got to be on shore. Because you drown in and I'm there drowning. Don't you one of us know how to swim? There ain't no raft and ain't no boat. We're going down. But that's, that's another old song. I'm going down. Oh, stop going down. Stop going down. No, no, I got to go up. I've been down far enough, long enough. I got to go up. I believe I can fly. Come on, you got to change that song. So in whom we got this word has blind the minds of them which believe not, lest the glory of light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of God has shined in our hearts. There we are again. Sanctify your heart, the Lord of your heart, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to see you talk about him. And you can finish reading this in your leisure, but then it says, but we have this treasure in the belt. What's the treasure? It's the word and the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's in me. Who's the he? The Holy Ghost. What's the treasure? The word. The word is treasure. But we have this treasure in the belt that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. So where's my dependency? It's on who's in me. It ain't on me because if my flesh dwells in no good thing. If I didn't have Jesus and didn't have the Holy Ghost and didn't have the Word, I'd be held on the stick. And wouldn't be him. And wouldn't be doing this. Hmm? Oh, I ain't crazy. I, ain't, I, I, I know distinctively where. Huh? I know it's the power of God keeping me. I ain't changing me. Hmm? I wasn't always saved. And ain't forgotten that they ever did or done. Just wake up every day and choose not to do it. By choice. You got to know where you're at now. But see, one thing you do is be in denial and lie to you. Hmm? Why does it? So you have this treasure and there's some brethren that actually give power to be a God like us. He said, yeah, you trouble on every side, you distress, you perplexed between and despair. And that's what God said, I got you. I got you, just trust me, lean on me, depend on me. Trust the power I've given you. The Bible said we are kept by his power. Huh? But God said, now what I've done to you, I'm going to do for somebody else. The Bible says freely you receive freely. You got to learn how to give it back. Be the witness. Huh? The Bible says he put the solitary family to bring out them that are bound with change. Man, you ought to be so excited God saved you. Now, your, your relatives ain't excited, but they talk about you. They talk about you like dogs. They talk about you so bad. That's what you don't want to send that. But see, some of the problems is we started off. See, most, what time, what happened? Let me share this, then we'll get out of here. See, what happened is when we first got saved, we were crazy. We just beat people up, we tore them down, we sent them to hell, we, man, we, we, we cursed them, and all kinds of stuff, because we were ignorant. We were excited, but we were ignorant. We didn't have the whole gospel. We, we were excited, man. But we put them in hell, not realizing you just came out. <laughs> huh? Hey, Ralph, you were just drinking yesterday. You got saved too, but Monday you were drinking, and they were drinking with you. So they don't understand how now all of a sudden they dealt with the demons and you were saved and the righteous. You didn't know how to articulate your encounter. So you beat them up and sit on the head. Now they don't want to talk to you. So now you got to learn how to readdress. 
Let's stop beating folks up and understand, listen, same blood saved me. That's how it feels to save me. God loves you just like he loved me. And the way God got me, God can get you if you let him. You ain't got to beat him up, you know. Oh, you keep smoking, you're going to die and going to hell. Come on. There's some saved folks, so-called saved folks going to hell. Amen. Because they don't say it on one day. <laughs> but they doing stuff Monday through Saturday. And I come right out the club and come to church. Praise the Lord! <laughs> come in church. Yes, got to be because of somebody out in the park out on the phone. Y'all laugh because you know it's true. And they come in here and sit down and just praise the Lord. How do you do? Cut it out. Cut it out. We got to align ourselves with the Spirit of God so God can get His harvest in. God's ready to use you to get the harvest in. 